Hello, my friends, and welcome to Rising World. Rising World is a Minecraft-like game in terms of how it plays and what the uh, game arc is. But it's done with much higher quality graphics, and I play a lot of it. It's a lot of fun. I would like to show you guys what it's all about. So let's go ahead and click single player. That's new world. Now, here are a bunch of things possible here. The first thing is we can name our world. So we're going to just name it Squatchcraft. And then we can create a seed. We can randomize that seed or we can add a specific seed. I'll just, uh, I'll take what's there. We're game mode. We're going to do survival. Now, the, all these icons allow us to turn on or turn off different things. So first of all, we have our world type. We have normal, super flat, surreal. So we're going to go with normal. We have ores, low, medium, and high. We have dun caves, disabled or enabled, vegetation, enabled or disabled. We Starting here is our starting biome. We can choose our biome. I think what we'll do is we'll make our start random. And then we have animals here, and some of them are hostile, some of them aren't. And so, let's see, any of them I want to turn off? No, I think I think we'll leave them all. All right, water, ponds, lakes, and oceans. We're going to leave all of those turned on. And then we have dungeons, underground, underwater, surface, and cabins. We're going to leave all of those on. And enemies, bandits, skeletons, and spiders. We're going to leave all of those on. Let's go ahead and create the world, and let's play some Rising World. Load times for a new world are usually pretty quick. And we have started in a snow biome. Not a good thing. We're going to hit I. You can see we're just wearing a tunic and some little rag booties. We've got a uh, stone axe. I need to get out of this biome fast because I'm going to start freezing really quickly. It has already begun. There's a polar bear. If I chose the wrong direction, I am in trouble. I've used up all of my stamina. And we are freezing. There's another polar bear. I'm going to have to move to avoid him. This is bad. I'm not seeing any sign of this relenting. We are losing health. Um, if I have stones and wood, I can build a fire. But there's a lot of nasties around us. And the fire only helps us while we're in the presence of the fire, you know? Oh, I'm starting to see some... Some stuff that's green. Even if all it is is tundra, it's still going to be better than what we're dealing with right now. Not to mention there's no food in a biome like this. Or very little food in a biome like this. Okay. Okay. All right, the plants here are frosty, but it's nowhere near as cold as the biome we were just in. We should have a chance to recover a little bit. All right. There's a cave. Is that a cave or is that water? Okay. These plants. There's a sugar beet. 
So we're still cold, but we're not as cold as we were. Get a little bit of food. All right, let's keep moving. Here we should be transitioning into warmth. There we go. Hello, horsies. There's some tomatoes. Potatoes. That right down there, that brown stuff is tungsten. Get a little cotton. If we come across sheep, we'll be able to uh, gather their wool without harming them. But meanwhile, there's always cotton. In fact, there are some sheep right there. I just got to walk up to them, hit F, and we'll gather their wool with no harm done. And we'll be able to make cloth out of that eventually. Stressing the eventually whereas most games like this I tend to spend a lot of time wandering to find home uh, this game it's a matter of locating the resources that I need and then settling in to build up until I want to go hunt for what will become my final true home. What I am looking for is I am looking for a patch of water near cliff face. Is that a aluminum? Up there. Yes, this is aluminum. We're going to come up and we're going to get the aluminum. We don't use it until we're dealing with more advanced stuff. But when it's time and you need it, if you've got to travel and find it, it can be a real pain. And so lucking into some of it here. We're picking it up automatically. The uh, rocks and stuff that you see laying there, those are just for atmosphere. But we're getting aluminum ore and a few rocks with each break. The rocks we'll eventually use to uh, create the means to smelt it. But there's iron, copper, aluminum, tungsten, gold, silver, sulfur. Mithril. I think that's all of them. But this is actually good because it's going to allow us to get a view down on this valley and see if there are any water holes anywhere nearby. Oh, and there's coal. There's a water hole right there. There's apple trees growing right near it. There's more aluminum. Kind of an interesting spot. We looks like we've got either a cave or some coal up there. Apples are good food, and they're good for healing you. There's some um, that copper iron. This is 
copper. So the stones are rolling down and landing in the water is what that's all about. Problem in general, oh, here's tungsten. Let's grab some of that. The problem in general is, yes, there's a water hole here, but there's basically little or nothing in the way of trees. Again, tungsten is used for a little more advanced stuff. It's used to make firearms, it's used to uh, make light bulbs and uh, fluorescent tubes because this does go kind of from medieval all the way up to modern in terms of buildable things. But getting a bit of it now just ensures that later on when we need it, we'll at least have some. And every time we do a break like this, um, we are getting either one or two tungsten ore, and, and one ore makes one ingot. So no fancy translations of a three-to-one ratio or any of that kind of nonsense. All right. Now, let's get a drink of water. We're just going to come down here and hit F. There we go. Here is iron. Not a lot, but it's a start. And every, the reason I'm taking the time to mine this is because, like I say, when we're mining in stone, every time we get a break, we're not only getting some ore, we're getting stone. And we're going to need stone in order to build our first small furnace to get to ingots. There we go. Yeah, I think I am going to move on. Look for another water hole that maybe has a little bit better situation. Willow trees and apple trees and cherry trees and there's birch and spruce. Let's see, that's that cave. There is some coal. Excellent. And there's more iron.
Let's cut down a couple trees here. Make sure we've got wood. We'll need to remove the stump. Have to pick it up. And those are uh, saplings. There's three of them there. Now, in the game, wood is wood. It's just as simple as that. So it doesn't make a difference if you've got spruce or you've got, you know, willow or whatever. It all produces the same materials, lumber and sticks and so on. However, they are distinct when you chop them down. So if I cut down a birch tree, I'm going to have birch wood. And that means it will not stack with spruce or something else of the sort so that's why i'm trying to make sure i cut the same kind of trees as i go here just so that it takes up less room in my inventory um, spruce tends to give you the most wood because they're very tall and straight there are some trees that will only give you, you know, two or three chunks of wood. Whereas a spruce may give you eight or nine. Come on, watering hole. Is that silver? No, that's just a light. Okay. But there might have been some silver growing there. May need to climb up, get a bird's eye view. Horses. Wait, is this watering hole? Yes, okay, so we've got a watering hole here. We've got a good cliff there. Got some trees within within walking distance. All right, we'll set up here. Because like I say, I, I don't want to make you guys wait 100 years in uh, Minecraft and other things. I have a tendency to search a long time till I find just the spot. But in this particular instance, I think we'll just, we'll dig in and we'll advance ourselves until we're capable of traveling safely and powerfully. So we're going to pause here. We're going to hit I to open our inventory. We're going to go to crafting. And you can see in general, there's a small shelter. This is what we'll use to set our spawn point and to sleep through the night. Fireplace, which of course is... Something we're going to craft right now, so we'll have fire when the time comes. And a uh, skewer is used to cook meat. Um, resources. We turn logs into lumber and lumber into sticks. So you'll see that we have 14 logs. So it'll be 4 times 14 is how much lumber we can get. And then 4 times that is how many sticks we can get. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, make eight lumber, and there's the 32 sticks we need for our shelter. So we're going to come up here to general, and we're going to craft that shelter. It'll go into our inventory, just like the fireplace did. We have torches, and we have torch mounts, and to make those, again, we're going to craft some lumber and turn that lumber into sticks. Go to lights. I'm going to, to uh, do torch mounts. It makes two torch mounts, one stick. 
and then it's one stick per torch. So I'm actually going to make three torches. So I've got two I can mount and one I can carry. And we have tools, which is the stone axe. We have weapons, the primitive club. We have medical bandages, which takes one cloth, leg splint. And then we have the crafting stations, a workbench, and a primitive furnace. Furnace takes 64 stone. We currently have 35. And the workbench takes 16 lumber, which we'll be able to do. So before it gets too dark, I'm going to dig in right here. I'm going to get a torch up here so that we can take a look. You can see it gets very dark very fast as we get into the ground. Whoops. Pick that back up. There we go. Take a torch holder and put it up on the wall right here. When I go to the torches, all we got to do is mouse over it and we can place a torch in it. Now we'll have the light to work as we, as we dig in deeper. It is starting to get dark. Now we're going to see about opening this up. So basically I wanted to do that until it was beyond our reach. Doing it on the ridge of the piece that I previously broke out. And it's kind of hard to get nice even stuff like this, but following that ridge line will help to keep it relatively uniform.
put a torch holder up right there. There we go. And this one, I'm going to take the, the torch. I'm going to hold F to remove the torch mount. I'm going to put the torch mount up above the door. So that'll help us find this place when we move around. We're going to get back in here and Complete excav com continue excavating. Should be enough room soon to put a few things down. This is mostly up for me right now about gathering stone more than anything else. Now there are tools that we will eventually have that allow us to smooth stone. So the sledgehammer can be used to uh, smooth out stone faces and stone floors. Okay. I'm going to take this, put it in slot number four, and I'm actually going to take it right outside and set it up. Just hold the right mouse to place it. And we'll sleep through the night. I just tap F. We'll sleep through the night. There we go. So, we're going to chop this tree right here. And our first acquisition is going to be a workbench. Crafting workbench takes 16 lumber. Let's go to resources, lumber, and we can actually, it's making four per each. There we go. So we can watch the number change over here as we do plus or minus to the number that we're going to create. And then we can also set it to maximum or minimum. But uh, back to crafting stations, workbench. And as you can see, we can have a bunch of different uh, looks to our workbench. That will be in my inventory now. We're going to get that placed down. And again, it's just going to be, I'm going to set it right outside. 
We hit F to enter that. And here we have lumber and sticks again, but now we have many other things available. We have a number of different lights available to us and different kinds of mountings, garden torches, which we stick in the ground to light an area up, lanterns of various sorts. They, of course, require metal. We have tools, and the stone axe is the only stone tool. All the rest of the tools, except for the wooden rake, are going to be made out of metal. So the wooden rake itself takes 16 sticks. So I'm going to go to resources. I currently have just enough to make 12. So let's make a little more lumber. One more like that. Go to tools. And we are going to go to wooden rake. We're going to craft that. Now, the rake is used for leveling ground. So I'm standing here. And if I left click, you'll see that it clears away the grass and it levels the ground. Left clicking does kind of a, a basic leveling. Right clicking fills in shallow depressions. And so it will raise the land. But it's whatever level I'm standing on, that's the level it's going to take it down to. As we do this, we might find worms. That, of course, can be used for fishing because fishing rods are a thing in this game. And we can replant grass, by the way, once we're done doing our leveling work. When we have the appropriate tool for it. All right. I'm going to hold F. That will allow us to pick up the small shelter. And we're going to put it back down on level ground. There we go. And table. Same thing. Hold F. And we'll put it down on level ground. There we go. Much better. Let's get back to the rake. Now you notice that as we approach the stone that it doesn't behave the same. It actually creates a depression. And I'm just going to clear us out an area to work in. That will eventually actually be a place for crops. But right now it's just to make sure we've got room to... Uh, set up some of the crafting benches and things so that we can actually build ourselves a little bit better spot inside. All right. So coming back to this, like I say, the remainder of these things are actually going to be made out of metal. There's a hunting knife, which is used for preparing hides, rolling pin, uh, actually, it's only used really as, as a weapon. And it's not a very good one. Um, we've got the crowbar, which is used to collect certain kinds of resources. we got the hoe for creating gardens, sledgehammer for smoothing out rock and to remove blocks without destroying them. The scythe for cutting grass and the sickle for cutting grass as well as getting seeds from plants. And the metal rake. We also have our trusty rusty axe and our pickaxe. Right, so that's tools. Um, weapons, club, wooden sword, 
regular sword, long sword, battle axe, small mace, mace, morning star, war hammer, a bow, a reflex bow, crossbow, musket, rifle. That should look familiar to any of you who do FPS. Um, and then, of course, the ammunition for those things. Um, have the same medical. They're miscellaneous. We have maps, blueprints, posters, fireworks, trash cans, the cooking grill, which is an important addition once we get iron in an anvil. Um, utilities, water skins, canteens, buckets, flares, dynamite, clock, compass, uh, telescope, fishing rod. For crafting stations, you'll see now, now there's a block bench, which allows us to create blocks for building. We have the saw bench, which allows us to uh, make things like doors and chests and things like that. We have the anvil, which we have to have in order to make iron plates, iron rods, um, and, you know, plates and rods out of other metals. We have the primitive furnace, and this was what we were shooting for because I'm actually going to create two of these. And we're going to get them set up, and we're going to start focusing on the production of metal. So get back to this um, we can use the arrow keys to rotate it you'll see that it can produce eight ingots at a time and on the side there's a little port at the bottom for putting in fuel so I'm just gonna hold the right mouse and place that there and do that with another one We can fuel them with lumber, but coal is obviously much more effective. Currently, we've only got 15 pieces of coal. We come over to the side where the opening is. We make sure we have the coal in our hand. And when we mouse over the bottom, at, when we touch the right point, we'll actually see the coal in there. I'm going to put six in that one and put the remaining coal in this one. And I think that's all the coal. Oh, no. Nope. All right. There we go. So this guy, we're going to go with our iron. We've currently got 10 iron ore. And as soon as we have the iron in our hand, when we mouse over the sockets in here, the ingot molds, we'll see it appear. And I just right-click to place it in there. And let's see, that is tungsten. That is copper. I guess we'll... And there's aluminum. We'll actually process some copper here. You can see they look very similar. And to start it, I just mouse over it anywhere. And when you see the little flame icon, hit F, and it will start burning. All right. So while that's going, I'm going to come in here and look at the size of the chamber we've got. I'm actually going to broaden this chamber. By kind of moving back and forth, I, it's easier for me to see where we got things sticking out. All right. That's 
looking pretty good. Let's come on out. I'm going to come to our crafting table and we're going to select a block bench. Get the same skin here. And I need 48 lumber to build the block bench. Currently, I can make 44 and I've got three left over, so I think I'm going to be one short. So we go to resources, lumber, max, craft. And then we're going to go to inventory. Got 32 plus 15. Yep. Looks like I'm going to have to cut another tree. And this is not Minecraft. Things don't happen instantly. You actually have to pass time to make things happen. Strawberries. Nice. Ooh, I am like direly thirsty. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to actually grab my tomatoes because they will give us both food and liquid. They give us more food than liquid, but they'll do the job. Watermelons give us more liquid than food. They do the job. There we go. Lumber, that should be all of it. Let's go to crafting stations, block bench. Get that up here. And we'll set that right over here. And we can use the arrow keys to rotate it if we so desire. I'm going to hold the right mouse to place it. Now, I currently have, let's see, that's 21 tungsten ore, 5 copper ore, 13 dirt, 22 aluminum. And there's 64 stone. Okay. So, you'll notice that if I do stone or dirt, that it actually will allow me to place it voxel-wise. But what I want is to get in the table here. And here we have stone. One chunk of stone makes one block. We've got stone bricks, which also use stone. We have sandstone, which we'd actually have to have sandstone to use. We have cobblestone. And all of these will have multiple shapes available to us. Several different kinds of stairs and angles for roofs and things like that. So let me get back to our square here. I'm going to say max. I'm going to craft those 64 blocks. Make sure they are up here in our inventory. You can see now a ghost of it on the floor. I'm going to come on in here. Starting right there. I'm just going to start laying out blocks. I'm holding left mouse, stretching it out, and then right clicking to set it.
And that boom that you just heard means that I'm occupying the space where the block wants to go. You'll notice I'm able to do this under the stone. And then I can actually take and break the stone and expose the ends of the blocks. Five left. And in the process of setting the stones and clearing away material, I'm getting more stone, which is going to allow me to make more blocks. And our iron should be about done here. Let's go see. Yep. Turn that off. Turn that off. We just mouse over it and hit F to pull them out. Get our little hand icon. Now we need an anvil in order to make plates and rods, but we do not need an anvil in order to make our basic metal tools. So we're going to Come on over and knock down this tree. Make sure we got plenty of wood. Good there. All right, so over here, looking at our inventory, we've got 10 iron ingots and currently no sticks. We have six copper ingots. All right, so I'm going to convert those into sticks. We're going to go crafting resources, stick. And we're going to go tools, and we're going to do a pickaxe, and you'll see that, that that takes one stick and one ingot, cheap at twice the price. We're going to do an axe, one stick and one ingot. We do not really need the sledgehammer or really any of this stuff unless we want to pick up... Um, you know, blocks, and that's four iron ingots, so we're, I'm going to hold off on that because with the axe and the pick, we can accomplish most of what we need to. We've currently got a wooden rake, which works just fine. 
Um, and instead, we're going to go to weapons. You can see that these take quite a bit of iron. All right. The uh, battle axe, which is my weapon of choice, takes eight iron and four sticks. So I'm going to craft that. So now we are armed and dangerous. So let's come up here and put the axe there. Put the pick in two. We're going to put the battle axe in three. You cannot use the battle axe to chop down trees, by the way. Just in case you should be curious. And now that we've actually got some things happening in there, I think it's time to come on in and put down our cooking fire. Which I think we'll put right back here. Hold the right mouse to place it. There we go. That'll give us a little extra light in there. And let's go ahead and put the rest of the copper ore in. As well as the aluminum. Fire those up. Gonna definitely have to uh, go on a trip and look for more more metal. But in the meanwhile, let's keep working on our little hidey hole. Much faster. Our torch is currently floating in the air, and that's okay for now. The campfire burns eternally, by the way, which is nice. Take the torch, hold F, because now the uh, campfire will provide us sufficient light to work in here. And thankfully, we don't. We're in an area that really doesn't have hostile creatures, so we don't have to worry that something's going to come rolling along in the middle of the night and eat us. Eh, well, that should be good. All right.
You want to leave an opening two blocks wide. this process it's a circular process because we pull out stone to make space for our blocks and that stone in turn becomes our blocks Slowly but surely. <clears throat> and so you may be saying, well, gee, now you're out of stone. We've got our tungsten ore and we've got dirt, which, by the way, you can work with dirt blocks. Works very quick and easy. And yes, I am out of stone, but getting more stone is no big deal. What's more important is just that I can show you that it's now possible for us to bring this inside. Let's shut these down for the night. It's possible to hold F, pick up the small shelter, bring it inside, tuck it in a handy corner. And there we go, let's sleep through the night. 